deep knowledge and thorough experience can leave many leaders blinkered, incurious and vulnerable to new ideas. Deep knowledge, thorough experience can leave many, many leaders incurious, blinkered and vulnerable to new ideas. You see, when you say that you're an expert, you have a responsibility to your team, to your department and to your business to remain open to new ideas. True leaders, true leaders have what Buddhists call beginner's mind. True leaders have what Buddhists call beginner's mind. Welcome to JT in the Raw, show 148, and good morning everybody. Great to have Jason on board, Tanya, Shane, Frosty, Liz, and I am coming to you live from the open fireplace last week freezing in camera this week freezing outside but beautiful in today's show was inspired by a conversation i had yesterday with my mentor michelle bowden where she sort of challenged herself saying kind of is just is this be, we've always done it this way is that the right way to do it so one of the things we're going to talk about today is this whole concept of expertise and as leaders are we experts Well, let's find out. And if you're wondering, if you're falling into the expertise trap, let me give you a little checklist to run by yourself. This is a way that you can audit to find out if you think you're in the expertise checklist, uh, in the expertise trap. Number one, I've written them down so I need to read them. You're unfamiliar with new technology or approaches in your industry. Be honest, score yourself out of 10. How familiar are you with the new technology and the new approaches in our industry? Number two, your answer when team members ask, why do we do it that way, is, well, that's how we've always done it. And I can tell you there are a bucket load of people I work with who give me that answer. Well, that's just the way we've always done it. That is a challenge. Amanda Stevens, good morning. Where the hell are you? Well, I sounded like Lara Bingle then, didn't I? Number three, when making decisions, you focus on risk rather than opportunities. If you focus on risk rather than opportunities, you could be in in the expertise trap. Number four, you discover your team are working together in ways that you haven't discovered yet. They might be using Slack, they might be mobile, they might be texting, they might be emailing, all behind your back. That means there's an issue. Number five, this is a beauty, and I hear this a lot, is that you propose the same strategies or the same tactics to new challenges. Number six, you make old solutions more precise rather than finding new solutions. And number seven, team members leave your company faster than they leave other companies. So in a quick self audit, if any of those seven are relevant to you, you may well be falling into the expertise trap. You want them again? Here they are again to do a self audit very quickly. You're unfamiliar with new technology or approaches in your industry. You answer, well, that's the way we've always done it. When making decisions, you focus on risk rather than opportunities. You discover your team members are doing and communicating in ways that you are not. You propose the same strategies and tactics to new challenges. You make old solutions more precise rather than finding new solutions. And team members are leaving faster your company than other companies. Good morning, Marissa. Good morning, William. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to unpack and look at expertise today. But first off, I have got a big shout out today. Normally, I've got three, four, five, six, seven shout outs. But today, there is one shout out. And the shout out today 
goes to Anytime Fitness Australia. That's why I'm wearing this jumper today. Anytime Fitness Australia and Are You OK? So, here's the shout out and here's why. Pete Beckler, good morning. Suicide is the leading death of Australians. Over 65,000 Australians attempt suicide every year and eight lives are lost owing to suicide in Australia every single day. Today, Anytime Fitness Clubs around Australia are trying to make a difference with a 24-hour treadmill challenge. Hats off to Anytime Fitness and all the franchisees that are jumping on board to this. It's called the hashtag tread as one. Hashtag tread as one. So my shout out goes to Anytime Fitness Australia and every franchisee that is doing this. But my shout out also goes to any Australians out there, get your ass or your feet into an Anytime Fitness. Tell them I sent you I don't care if you're a member of another gym, I don't care if you're a club owner, work in another gym, get yourself down to an Anytime Fitness Club today and get on their treadmill in the next 24 hours and walk as they raise money to prevent suicide in Australia. It's a great cause. They're supporting Are You OK? Let's de-brand today. Let's think about the better health of all Australians and let's get down and help and raise some money so that Anytime Fitness and Are You OK? can help prevent suicide. It's an important issue. We cannot, aff- we cannot not talk about it. So let's de-brand. Let's support this franchise and the individual franchises. Get out, get on that treadmill and raise some money to help prevent suicide in Australia. If you like that idea, give me a love heart. I will be heading to a couple of Anytime Clubs today and tomorrow and jumping on treadmill for, I don't know, half an hour, maybe. We'll see how we go. Let's turn our attention, ladies and gentlemen, to this concept of expertise. Thank you, Frosty. Thanks, Shano, for those love hearts. Let's turn our attention now to this thing that is called X. Expertise, expertise. Tomas, good morning. Justin Charlish, good morning. Over time, over time, the very expertise that led to our success can in fact lead to our downfall. The very thing that led to our success can in fact lead to our downfall. If we think about Kodak, we think about Nokia, We think about the bricks and mortar retailers these days who are competing with Amazon. Even if we just think that the thing that led to our success was our knowledge and leaders, owners, managers, not attending staff training could be as simple as that. Ladies and gents, expertise is critical and experts Well, what we need to focus on is our outlook on business, on trends, and future. If we're an expert and we're looking at those things, trends, future, and our business, we can narrow our focus. This can hinder our development. What more importantly it does is it distances us from our team. And what it does it increases the distrust between our team and our leadership. Let me say that again, because this is an important factor when we're leading teams. As experts, often our outlook can, around business and around trends and around our future can be narrowed. Now what that does is obviously it hinders our growth, but it separates us from our team and creates distrust between us and our team. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you eight ideas, eight ideas around leadership and expertise. The first one will not surprise you. And that means, that is, we need to, number one, check our own ego. Leave our ego at the door. We can't dictate solutions. We can't overshadow our team. And with our team, we need to listen, not tell them. Listen, not tell them. That is number one. Number two is we need to revisit all the assumptions we have in our business. 
We yet need to analyse what is valid and what is not. What is valid and what is not. Good morning, Mike James over there in the US. How are you, mate? Thank you. We need to analyse what needs to change. Not for the sake of change, but for the sake of making things better in our business. Not for the sake of change, but for making things better. Number two is revisit the assumptions. Number three is we always need to be seeking new ideas. We have to be open to new ideas, seeking new ideas. This means we have to be learning. We have to get exposure to new stuff. It's my technical word for ideas, tactics, strategies. We need to be open to this. We need our teammates, the people that work for us, to become our teachers. Feed that information up to us. They are in the trenches every day. They can give us quality feedback on how we do things. We need to challenge the way we do things. We need to challenge, is this the best way to do things? In fact, what's really cool would be asking our team to present new ways to do things. Wouldn't that be cool? Is it in a meeting once a month, once a quarter, is that we have a team say, here's the challenge, here's a new way of doing things. So as leaders, we have to proactively Number three, proactively seek new ideas. Number four is we need to find new sources of information. We have to find new ways of getting information. This means we could hire new people with new skill sets. We should go to conferences, listen to podcasts, read. We need to proactively Open our mind to new ideas. You need to watch JT and the Raw. If you like that one, give me a love heart. We need to be open to new ideas. Hire new people that don't think like us, that come from a different background. We need to go to conferences, read books, listen to podcasts. Chantelle, I thought I saw you online. Have you got any recommendations for a podcast that people should listen to if they're in the fitness industry? Number five. Number five, add a role model, a learning buddy, or a coach into your inner circle. Let me say that one again. Add a role model, add a learning buddy, or add a coach into your inner circle. We need to connect with someone who is creative, someone who thinks differently, and someone who gets exposure that you don't get so that they can bring these fresh ideas. Sean Lestrange, good morning. We need to connect with someone who will ask the difficult questions. If you won't challenge your own assumptions, then we need to connect with someone who will. So, number five, oh, I nearly got to number six here. Number five is to your inner circle, add a role model, a learning buddy or a coach who will challenge you, who will bring information from areas that you are completely unaware of. Number six, we need, morning Connie down there in Melbourne, how are you? Number six is we need to embrace experimentation at work. We need to embrace experimenting things, experts, often stop experimenting. So we need to find challenges in our business and we need to experiment. It's the only way we can innovate is if we experiment and try different things. So number six is embrace experiments. Number seven is an interesting one. When I was doing some research on this, here's what I found. Number seven is that the best leaders in the world are people who challenge themselves personally. And they don't fall into the rut of the expertise trap because they do creative hobbies. Creative hobbies which have them thinking outside the box. This brings open thinking into the workplace. Creative hobbies leads to creative thinking in the workplace. Really interesting studies behind this. And number eight, not surprising, is that we need to learn from our mistakes. We need to accept our mistakes and we need to learn from them. And again, during the research, I found these two great examples 
What about, would you be game enough to have this? These two examples is that you have a mistake meeting, a mistake meeting where once a quarter, we find out what was the mistake that we made and what did we learn from it? Wouldn't that change the culture of your business? What was the mistake that we made and what did we learn from it? Or the second idea that I read, and I really like this one, is a dare to try award in our team. A dare to try award. It may or may not work, but at least someone tried something new. What do you think of those? Let me run through those again quickly. Troy Morgan, good morning. Amanda Stevens tells me this is your best episode yet. Thanks. That means a lot coming from you. Remember, Amanda, the person that stimulated this thought was Michelle Bowden, our friend Michelle. Okay, so here are those eight again that as leaders, we must continually be looking at. And I want you to hear this or listen to this, hear this, think about this, and maybe even in the comments, tell me which of these eight you think you need to work on. Leaders must check our ego at the door. We have to listen, not tell to people. Number two, we need to revisit all our assumptions in business. Number three, we need to seek new ideas. Number four, we have to find the new source of information. Number five, we need to add a role model, a learning buddy, or a coach to our inner circle. Number six, we need to embrace experimentation at work. Number seven, challenge ourselves personally. And number eight, learn from our mistakes. So Frosty's telling me number five for him, which is a role model. Tom Owls says number three, which is seeking new ideas. Amanda Braxy says, we do this in our month, debrief on mistakes and lessons learned. Awesome, that's lovely. Great job, Amanda. If you know anybody, anybody, regardless of what industry that they are in, that you think may be falling into the expertise trap, then I would love you to share the show right now. Just tag someone in the comments below. Put their name in the comments below. They'll get a little boop boop on their newsfeed that they should watch the show. They won't know why, but please put that little link down below and tag them and then they can watch the show later. So that's it. That's the thought on expertise. That's it. Hope you got value from this. This week, what am I up to? Well, 50% of my week is gonna be focused on the Fitness Industry Technology Summit. If you are in the industry and you do not know what the Fitness Industry Technology Summit is, put FITS in the comment below, F-I-T-S. I will send you a link. Tickets are selling ultra fast, actually, which I am super happy with. But put FITS in the comment below and I'll send you a link. I'm also working on content for the industry leaders round tables that start meeting in June and July. So if you are a personal trainer or you own a fitness business, own a fitness business, please put in the comments below, ILR, and I will send you the link. I will send you the link to that. Ladies and gentlemen, remember today, Whatever business you are in, wherever you are in Australia, get into an Anytime Fitness, get on a treadmill, tread as one, raise some money today for suicide prevention. It is a big cause of Australians dying suicide. Let's work on how we can prevent it, raise some money. So let's de-brand, let's get out and support, forget the Anytime brand, but let's support this worthy cause by getting into a club. And when you get in there, tell them JT sent me from JT in the Raw. Maybe that'll give me some more listeners as well. You never know. All right, that's it. I'm done. But before I go, quote of the week. You know I love this. I always love to finish with it. So here is quote of the week. Leaders, leaders greatest fear isn't their expertise that will be challenged, but they'll become complacent. 
Remember, last week's show, I spoke on complacency. So if you missed last week's show, put 147 in the comments below. 147, I'll send you the link. Leaders' greatest fear isn't their expertise that they will be challenged, but they'll become complacent. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been tuned in to JT in the Raw, show 148, where we spoke about falling into the expertise trap and I gave you solutions not to. If you're tuning in now, hit replay, wherever that button is, and catch the show. If you know anyone that you think could get value out of the show, please tag them in the comments below. I'd be really grateful for it. Hope you got value out of it. I hope to see some of you on social media taking a photo of you on a treadmill in Anytime Fitness Club today. I have no affiliation with the brand, but I do love the cause. Hashtag Treaders1 today. I will catch you same time next week on the flip side.